Hi, I'm Dr. Brian, and on this segment of Ask a Farinarian, I'll be addressing one of the most common calls I get. Hey, Doc, I think my horse may be colicking. Do I have you come out? What should I do? Great question. First, let me start with the basics. What does a colic look like? AKA, what is your horse actually doing that might be concerning or abnormal? Most colics often start with subtle signs like laying down too much, coming in slowly, lack of appetite, like a horse that normally eats well but didn't finish his hay this morning. More obvious and concerning signs are rolling, pawing, laying down then getting up multiple times, stomping or swishing its tail, or abnormal or excessive sweating. These clear and sometimes not so clear signs are an important part of the story to tell your vet to help them decide how urgent it is. In general, the more dramatic your horse is behaving, like laying down, pawing, rolling, uh, the more likely it is truly an emergency now. Some other useful information to get is your horse's vitals, including heart and respiratory rate. There's a couple of places you can take your horse's pulse. One of them is underneath the jaw. You want to feel about midway underneath the curved part. You're looking for a couple of thin little ropey structures about the size of spaghetti. You want to use light broad pressure across your fingers to find the pulse. Another place you can try is along the inside of the elbow. You'll need to use a little bit more firm pressure. Again, you're feeling for some ropey structures. Or you can simply flip your hand around, put your palm against the chest wall and feel for the heart rate there. Lastly, you can try along the back of the pastern. Again, you want to use light pressure across your fingers to feel the pulse. Far and away, the most reliable way to get heart and respiratory rate is with the stethoscope. Start by placing the head of the stethoscope up underneath the elbow on the left side. You're going to need to use firm pressure here. If the leg is back and in your way, feel free to bump the leg forward a bit so that you can hear the heart better. With all of these methods, you're going to want to count the number of beats or breaths for 15 seconds and multiply by 4. A normal heart rate is around 40 per minute and a respiratory rate is around 20 breaths per minute. A good spot for counting breaths is about midpoint on the chest. If you need to, you can confirm it by watching the abdomen pass the last rib. Best way is to pick either inhaling or exhaling and stick with that. And if you need to, you can simply move around to the front of the horse, put your hand over one of the nostrils, and count the breaths there. Additional information is mucous membrane color and character, as well as capillary refill time. This essentially helps to determine the circulatory status and hydration level of your horse. Here's how to check both of these things. When you stick your fingers in the mouth, the mouth and gum should be wet and slimy. For capillary refill time, press your thumb against the gums and hold it for a few seconds. Take your thumb away and count how many seconds it takes for that area of gum to return to normal color. It should take less than two seconds. Another way to check hydration is called skin tint. Midpoint on the neck is best. Grab a few fingers worth of skin, pinch firmly and lift. The skin should return to normal position in one to two seconds. Longer times can be a strong sign of dehydration. So now that you've identified the abnormal behaviors and have taken your horse's vital signs, now you can call the vet and relay that information. One of the biggest mistakes people will make is waiting too long to call. Even if you're not sure if your horse needs to be seen or not, at least go ahead and call your vet, get on their radar, and you and they can start uh, forming a plan for when and if your horse needs to be seen. If your vet's not available right now, at least ask them who to call uh, as a backup. So you've called your vet. Here are the things to do while you wait. Do not feed your horse. Adding more food into the gut doesn't help anything and can actually make the problem worse. Make sure your horse is in a clean, open, well-lit area. If they're being quiet, they can stay in their stall, but if they're pawing and rolling, it's probably better to keep them in a more open area so they are less likely to hurt themselves. If they're out in the pasture, try to walk them into the barn, but obviously use common sense and keep yourself safe first. Another question I get commonly is, Doc, should I keep them walking around or not? Actually, walking them around is usually not necessary. If the horse will stand quietly or lay down quietly, they're fine to just rest. The exception to this is if they're uh, up and down, extremely agitated, won't stand still. In that case, it's a good idea to keep them walking. A horse that's repeatedly up and down or rolling can actually injure itself more in doing this. So in those circumstances, walking around can be a good idea. 
Other things you can do while you're waiting is to make sure that you're able to transport your horse to the hospital if needed. Make sure that your trailer is hooked up. If you don't have a trailer, go ahead and call around and get one lined up. If your vet determines that your horse needs to go elsewhere, this often needs to happen now, so be ready for it. Also, just simply watch your horse and pay attention to whether they seem to be getting better or worse. If your horse has insurance, go ahead and call the company and find out what they cover. And lastly, stay calm. While you're waiting, an important thing not to do is do not give your horse medication without checking with the vet coming out first. One of the most common questions I get is, Doc, should I go ahead and give my horse some banamine or not? The answer actually is usually no. If you go ahead and give your horse medication without checking with the vet first, when the vet comes out, they're likely going to have to choose between either giving them some additional meds and overdosing them or waiting even longer to get a clear idea of what your horse needs. The only, only exception to this is if you know that help is hours away, you've taken the vitals, you've filled your vet in, you have a plan, and they have told you to go ahead and do so. In regards to medications that you have on hand, do not store the meds in your trailer or in most of the barns where they get too hot or too cold, as poorly stored and outdated meds are likely worthless. Additionally, understand that medications given orally can take a long time to have any effect, up to two hours. So if for some reason your vet instructs you to give the medication, double check that it has been stored properly and it is not expired first. So to wrap this all up, colic can present in many different ways. The more information that you can give your vet, the easier it will be to navigate this situation and give your horse the best care possible. Make sure that you keep yourself safe and don't do anything that you're not comfortable with. Understand you know your horse the best. So the more help you're able to give me, the better for your horse. Thanks for watching.